Welcome back to another video guys Today we will be compression testing the engine in the Sarix 8 I will be using the Jaguar to give a boost that way I make sure I have good battery and nothing low and let me show you the package here so, so I just got this yesterday and I opened it got some lanyard paper and then the actual tester in here So this is the best tester you can find for the rotary, it's digital and yeah you pretty much just plug it in your spark plug hole and then you make sure you disable your fuel and spark and then just crank it and it's going to calculate your compression. So with that being said, let's start taking off the fuses for the fuel and then I will take off the spark plugs, connect the tester to it hook up the battery and we'll start cranking and hopefully we have some good numbers. So the best thing to do is before you spend a lot of money into a car or especially a rotary to make sure that the compression is good. Also it's a good time to do a compression test when you're having problems and that way you won't replace a lot of parts and it turns out to be that the compression on the engine is low. So it's always good to eliminate the engine and look at the other parts. That's going to be my first time using this tester and my first time doing compression test. So let's disconnect the fuses and we will take it from there. So the fuse box is here on the right. We're gonna look at the um, we're gonna look at the box and follow the fuses. So here I have the fuel. I disconnected that already. And then for the spark, the ignition I think is this one. I'm going to take that one out, hoping it's not the actual switch ignition, which is the key ignition, hoping it's the coil ignitions. So I'm going to take this out and then start removing the spark plugs. I'm going to show you how to do that and then we will do the test. The square fuses, the big ones are slightly hard to take out, just wiggle it and put some force into it and it should eventually come up. So right now I took out the fuel and the ignition and let's go inside, try cranking it. If the car doesn't start, that means we took out the right fuses. Okay, so I think I took out the ignition fuse and now I have the key light flashing. So it probably thinks that somebody's trying to steal the car and it immobilizes the vehicle. So let's put that ignition fuse back. All right, so I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put back the ignition fuse in. All right, let's give it another try. So it's still flashing. I'm gonna disconnect the battery for a while, just for the computer to reset. And hopefully my vehicle is not mobilized. Even if um, I have the tools to program keys, and that should not be a problem. I'm going to give a few minutes for the system to reset and I'm going to try again. Oh shit. So I did get a hold of it. it literally fell right into the red. And there it is. Let's grab a magnet. Let's try now, hopefully that key light went away. Alright, so that's good. So right now the only fuse that I took off was the fuel fuse. 
And the car should crank now, but it's not gonna start. That is weird. That does not make sense to me. All right, let's go look at the fuses again, because I'm not sure what I pulled off. That is fuel, and I did take out fuel, so I don't know why it's still working. Oh, there you go, fuel pump. 20 amps, which is that guy here. Connect the injector as well. And that should probably do the trick. There we go. So far, so good. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to jack up the car, take out the wheel. That way, I could access the spark plugs. And then we will connect the sensor to it. And I will take off the wheel now and then show you how you could access the spark plugs. Alright, so I'm pretty much screwed. I took out four studs and one of them broke. So I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to take it out. Not a very good start. Now the spark plugs are all the way in there, that blue wire that you see. Make it much easier if I could take off the wheel. Okay, so what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to either drill the bolts or I'm going to try cracking the the lug and then I can replace that. Just literally just shear it off. Let me try melting it down. Nope. Alright, so I did manage to freaking melt and destroy this bolt or the stud I'm gonna have to find a way to replace this we shouldn't be a problem but I did cause damage to the rim and I'm not too stressed about it for now we're gonna take off the spark plug you can either reach it from here from the side there is your trailing and your leading the top and the lower so I'm just gonna Open that. Second rotor now. We're done with the first rotor. I'm not sure of the reading, but it seems fine. I make sure once you're done doing the compression test, put back all the fuses that we took off earlier, and you should be good to go. So I wrapped up everything, everything is done, closed, we got the numbers. Now based on the numbers or the readings that I got, um, above 100 is Mazda spec, below 100 is below Mazda spec. So that tells me that the readings that I got, which is in 80s, is not very good uh, or is not acceptable according to Mazda. Above 110 is very good. Now I don't have any issues with the vehicle, it starts up whether it's cold or hot, so I'm not too stressed about it. It just means that a rebuild is coming soon, but I might have plans with this car and I might do a swap. So let's see how everything goes and how long this is going to last for. I'm guessing probably a year. So if you do have a rotary engine, just make sure you do a compression test to find out the health of the engine. That way you don't spend too much money on the car. 
or at least start saving up for the rebuild or the parts that you might need for the rebuild. Thank you for watching, guys.